This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 47 with Rod Cleef. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobster here and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I've shared with you guys before how I love listening to podcasts when I go for a run or when I'm driving from one place to another and I came across a podcast called Lifetime Cashflow Through Real Estate Investing by Rod Cleef. Now if you're interested in creating passive income streams from real estate, it's a great resource. It's been great to connect with Rod Cleef. As one of America's top real estate professionals, Rod Cleave has personally owned more than 2,000 single-family homes and multiple apartment communities. Rod has also built several multi-million dollar businesses and has dedicated himself as a community philanthropist, forming and leading the Tiny Hands Foundation, which has benefited more than 40,000 underprivileged children. A compelling rags-to-riches to rags-to-riches rags story Rod Cleef soared from humble beginnings as a young, impoverished Dutch immigrant to incredible success. Cleef's experience involves both remarkable triumphs and spectacular failures, which he affectionately calls seminars. Rod Cleef brings incredible authenticity and insight to his approach to real estate, business, and life. Rod has used his personal philosophy of goal setting, visualization, and manifesting success to become a successful entrepreneur, philanthropist, and family man. Before we are joined by Rod, just a reminder that you can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can grab your free trial and audiobook download at cashflowninja.com forward slash free book download. You can also support the show by doing your Amazon shopping through our homepage, cashflowninja.com forward slash Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything and it supports our show. And all of our show notes and past shows can be accessed at cashflowninja.com. If you haven't joined our community and mailing list, you can do so by signing up at CashflowNinja.com or texting the word CashflowNinja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Cashflow Ninja podcast with your host, MC Lobsher. You must be prepared to ignite. Rod, welcome to the show. Thanks, MC. I really appreciate having me on the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can you please share a little bit about your background and your journey as an entrepreneur and a real estate investor? Sure. Uh, it's a it's a long sordid tale, but I'll 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 make I'll be brief. I immigrated from Holland when I was six years old. Uh, we uh, and I ended up in Denver. And I uh, didn't have much growing up, uh, goodwill, clothes, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we grew up, I mean, we had love, but we didn't have much money. And uh, I remember we had powdered milk because we couldn't afford regular milk and day old bread because it was cheaper. But, you know, I, I learned about uh, making money from my mom. My mom made money babysitting of all things, but then she used that money when I was about 14 years old to buy the house across the street for $30,000. And when I graduated from high school, that house was worth in the 50s. And although I wasn't very good at math and don't particularly like math, I was able to do that calculation. And I thought, you know what, there's something to be said for this. And so I got my real estate broker's license in Colorado when I turned 18. And I was able to become a broker because they, you could do that through education versus experience back then. I don't think you can now. but And I started selling real estate. And uh, I... Uh, Ended up uh, over the next decade buying about 500 houses in Denver on a buy and hold strategy and uh, rented them out. And then I ended up buying a couple hundred houses in Memphis, same same thing. I call that as one of my seminars. I don't call them failures. I call them seminars, but that was a, that was a big seminar in Memphis. And then my biggest seminar came in Florida. I, I ended up buying about 13 or 14 
1,500 houses in Florida. And again, all on a buy and hold strategy. Um, I had 800 houses when 2008 hit. And because I had refinanced a number of them and because taxes and insurance are very high here in Florida, it really didn't, that model didn't cash flow well. And I can tell you a whole lot of reasons why I don't recommend doing what I did. Um, you know, I've owned over 2,000 houses and multiple apartment buildings, but back in 2008, when the market crashed and my va- I saw the value of my real estate actually go negative, even though I was a, at a really good loan to value, you know, I had a, I had a seminar, a big seminar, it was about a $50 million seminar and I, I, I imploded and and it was ugly and bloody. And But what was interesting is the lesson I got out of it, because there's always a lesson, that's why I call it a seminar, was that my multifamily did just fine. But my single family uh, in a buy and hold strategy didn't. And although, you know, I, I, I flipped houses in the past, I've made a lot of money flipping houses and I believe in it. Um, I also believe that if you're making a lot of money flipping houses, you should be using that money to buy multifamily real estate for a long-term investment play. Because if you're flipping every January 1st, you go back to work. And if, but it, once you buy enough multifamily that's cash flowing, at some point, you don't have to go back to work, and that's why I'm such a proponent, and that's why my I have a podcast as well at, about about multifamily real estate investing, and you know, and and that's why it's dear to my heart because I got the memo now. You know, it took it took two thousand houses and and decades of my life to get the memo that I need to be focused on multifamily real estate, and so, you know, it's. Uh, it's it's something I enjoy talking about and happy to talk about that some more. But uh, it it that's that's kind of my journey. I, I went from Denver through Memphis to Florida, bought a ton of real estate, a lot of houses and and apartments, and and uh, I've I've loved it. I've loved real estate. And for those of you that are listening, you know, if you're getting thinking about getting into real estate, make sure you associate pleasure with it because that's a critical component. You have to love what you do, and you can you can learn to love what you do if you associate pleasure with it. Now, let's start with mindset and psychology because that's where it all starts. And you've done a fantastic job discussing this on your podcast as well. Oh, thank you. Thank Uh, you. Thank you for that. Yeah, let's let's do that. That's that's my favorite thing to talk about. I, I, you know, basically anything that you're successful in, 80 percent of your success is your psychology and only 20 percent is the actual mechanics. And so you mentioned my podcast. I do these little uh, five to eight minute clips called your driving for success tips. And they're all about psychology. And so let's talk about it. I mean, I cover things like goal setting, visualization, manifesting, you know, um, finding your why, um, dealing with fear, building your competence, the way successful people think. So let's start from the beginning. Those of you listening that are wanting to get into real estate, you have to really determine what it is you want, number one, okay? So so, so if you haven't done, I'm sure you have if you're listening to this podcast, you've written down your goals, but if you haven't, for God's sakes, do that, okay? Write your goals. Second thing, you have to determine why you want it because writing down your goals, you know, everybody Everybody at New Year's Eve writes down their goals and then a month later they're forgotten. But if you write down why you want them, that's the why that'll drive you. And it's not just the positive whys, by the way. You know, hey, I, I want to I wanna make a million dollars a year so I can buy everything I've always wanted so that I can have the house I've wanted so that I can buy my wife or my spouse what the car they wanted. All the positive things are important. But you also have to put some negatives. Like if I don't make it to $10,000 a month, I'll – and this is going to sound harsh. I'll feel like a failure or I'll have let my family down or whatever. Be hard on yourself because believe it or not, the negatives will drive you as well. And again, I know that sounds harsh, but but people will do more to avoid pain than to, to seek pleasure. So put positive and negative wise in. So that's 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 the framework. Then, guys, I will tell you. I think one of the most important things you can do once you've got your outcomes written out is is get pictures of those things. Get pictures of the things that you want. And I'll tell you real briefly, and, and this may sound like I'm bragging, and that is not it at all. I just can only share my story because it's my story. But, you know, when I first got into real estate, I had this horribly ugly four-door Granada, Ford Granada. I thought it was what real estate people should have, and it was ugly. And I always wanted a Corvette, so I got a picture of a Corvette and I put it on the 
visor of of my Granada, and a year later I had a Corvette. Then this is back when this will date me. This is back when Magnum PI was on the radio, and he always drove this beautiful red Ferrari, and I wanted a Ferrari, so I got a picture of that Ferrari and put it on the visor of my Corvette. Two years later, I got a Maserati that looked just like that one, and and I'm telling you, visualizing. And getting pictures of the things you want. If you look in my planner right now, there are uh, there are things that I've had in here for 15 years um, from material things. And I've also got gratitude pictures, which I recommend. But it, having these pictures – and what's astounding, by the way, is uh, I'm looking – I'm leafing through it right now. I have pictures of the house that I wanted. I have pictures of the watches that I wanted. I have a picture of the Lamborghini I ended up getting. You know, I, I all these things that I've always wanted – that they're not as important to me anymore. I'll be candid. I, I'm much. I've, and we'll talk about giving back. I think later in the episode, hopefully. But I, that, those things aren't as important to me now as they used to be. But it's these pictures, this visualization, as if I already had these things. I know that might sound a little foofy to some of you guys, but it works. I mean, I can't tell you how well it works. You know, um, to to visualize, to manifest what you want in life. I mean, you know, I. The, the the movie and the book The Secret was real big a few years back and all about the law of attraction and I'm telling you guys that stuff works so that's the site the, once you have these things defined and you have pictures of these things that you want when you hit those inevitable speed bumps and you get bloodied and you get knocked down as long as you still have the outcome to focus on you'll get back up and you'll keep going and you'll find another way to get to it and that's why I highly recommend doing that and get the goals, get the pictures, so that you have something to focus on. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the vision board, and then also yep. just looking at what I wrote down for my why every day, just having that in the first page of my binder. And Absolutely. Then, and then also the just a strong mission, so when times get tough, and <laughs> you know That's they right. do, I just That's right. uh, think of what my mission is of this podcast, and my mission for my business and uh that that keeps me going so yeah thank you for sharing that no That's no absolutely you know it's 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 funny and I'll, I'll share another story and again this may seem like i'm bragging it's totally not i'm just trying to give you guys my story i wanted a house on the beach for 20 years and i'm not kidding i i, I wanted this house on the beach and i i visualized the palm trees and all of that and uh, and this ties into goal setting, and there's the message. The, I'll give you the message here in a second. I ended up building this 10,000 square foot testament to my ego, incredible place on the beach in, in here in, in Sarasota, and I was floating in this pool, looking up at this three story testament to my ego, like I said, and I got really depressed. And the message here, and I didn't realize it at the time, was that you always need to make sure that, and you will, guys, if you do what I'm saying here, you visualize and do these goals, you will reach these goals, but it's always important to have additional goals at, that that so that you always have a new goal to to reach because I actually got depressed. I was floating in my pool. I got depressed. I'm like, what the hell? I got this. I accomplished all this. Why am I feeling so crappy? And it was because I'd reached a goal, and you know, like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish and i didn't have a vision for the future anymore because i'd reached it so make sure that you you have supplemental goals when you reach big goals be otherwise you'll encounter what happened to me there but um but like i said these you know my life has changed quite a bit and what's important what was important to me back then is not as important to me now and um but but visualizing and man, it really helps you manifest what you want. I'm, I'm many of you have probably heard the story about Jim Carrey where he was broke and he, he wrote himself a check for ten million bucks and he carried it around in his wallet and he'd sit up by the Hollywood sign and he'd look at it and it, and he ended up you know making ten million dollars for Dumb and Dumber. I mean you know uh, Olympic race uh, Olympic Olympics you know that's in the news right now right. they always visualize their races before they do them and you know they've hooked monitors up to these these athletes and when they're visualizing the race the muscles actually fire off as if they're actually racing and it's I mean it's proven to aid in in their success so trust me guys I know it sounds spoofy sometimes but this stuff works so make sure you do it and one little tip when you have these vis you're, you're visualizing do it as if you already have it and do it from a place of gratitude with emotion like thank you and 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 feel it because I'm that that's that's one of the critical components of this and some people call it prayer you can call it prayer but don't underestimate the power of it now rod you have spoken about the difference between achievement and fulfillment 
Can you share your philosophy and view on the difference between a- achievement and fulfillment? Achievement obviously is 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 what everybody thinks they want. You know the success, the outcomes that they're looking for, but. Another another component of when I got depressed when I was floating in my pool was the fact that I'd achieved, but I didn't feel fulfilled. And I, again, I didn't know it at the time. I didn't realize what it was. And luckily, I got exposed to Tony Robbins. This was 16 years ago. And I ended up going to one of his events and sawing that he feeds families. And And I started – and I incorporated that into my life and that that gave me fulfillment. There are a lot of people that are very wealthy that have achieved, but they're unhappy, and they're unhappy because they're not fulfilled. And you know, you know, fulfillment means different things for different people. But I will tell you that one way to feel fulfilled is to get out of yourself and not focus on yourself and focus on helping other people in whatever that means. Okay, it can be financial, it can be just smiling, de- deciding to smile at everybody you see on the street today. But getting out and not focusing inwardly but focusing outwardly will help you feel fulfilled. And for me, you know, I I started feeding families and I modeled what Tony did. And, and, uh, you know, I – I, I, do you want me to speak about that for a minute? I mean – Yeah, absolutely. You've done fantastic work with the Tiny Hands Foundation. Thank you. Well, basically what I did is that year that I first went to a Tony event, I fed five families. My brother and I fed five families. We – we – Bought big baskets of food, and we del- we called a church and found out who needed help. And uh, uh, the third family I went to, uh, this lady it was a shack. I mean, it was one of these shotgun kind of houses where you walk into the living room, then you walk through the bedroom to get to the kitchen, and the bathroom's off the kitchen. It was just all straight shot. And there were five kids and this lady in this house. The husband had left, and the lady when she when I came to the door and she saw the food, she started crying, and then. Her five kids came out, and they all started crying, and then I started crying, of course, and and I was hooked. And so the next year, I did 50 families for Thanksgiving, the year after that, 100, the year after that, 200, then 400, then 800, and then in 2006 or seven, I did 1,600 families, and I paid for it all up to that point. Um, but then 08 happened, <laughs> and so I, I had formed the Tiny Hands Foundation, and it's my foundation, and we have now, I'm very proud to say, have fed 45,000 children. We Sorry, also have started – thank you. We've started some other initiatives where um, we do backpacks filled with school supplies. In fact, we just did that two weeks ago. We did 1,500 backpacks for uh, kids in the Sarasota and Bradenton areas filled with school supplies and we've done thousands of those and we've also do a teddy bear brigade where we do um teddy bears uh, that we give to the police departments for them to the officers to carry in their cars when they encounter a child that's been inside of a traumatic uh situation and we've done thousands of those and that has given my life fulfillment and guys those of you listening i know that you're listening because you want to make money and you want to succeed but if you forget about this last conversation and you don't also get fulfilled you're missing out on the most important piece give back focus on giving back when 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 you hear that what you give comes back tenfold trust me it's the truth and i mean financially as well i don't just mean in feeling good but i'm you've got to have fulfillment or you're unhappy the whole the purpose of life is to be happy so realize that it's not just about the financial things it's not just about the material things it's about how you contribute and who you help just don't lose sight of that because that's probably the most if you didn't get anything else out of this this interview with me get that right and you can start right away and give give us you go you don't have to yeah. but you know build your wealth and it's that be do have right you don't have to you, you, you don't have wealth. to have money to do this exactly. you don't have to have money to help other people you go 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 uh you know help an elderly person you know uh uh, there's so many little things you can do. You can just go to the Starbucks and ask the ask the barista how they're doing, you know, and and or go to a restaurant, ask the waiter how they're doing. You never know who's gonna who they're gonna you know see next. I mean, they they could encounter somebody that's suicidal next, and their energy could save their life because you you live them up by asking them about themselves that's you can contribute in so many ways it doesn't have to be money okay it's t- it's taking a genuine interest in someone is contributing to them so you know don't don't lose sight of that now let's yeah. uh, change gears here and talk a, l- a little bit about real estate now you've invested in single family real estate and then multi-family real estate 
Was there any reason in particular or a aha moment that you had that made you go from investing in single family real estate to multifamily real estate? I did. Um, okay. Yeah, I, 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 what I realized in my aha moment was when I saw fifty million dollars of my equity evaporate in two thousand eight. And my aha moment was I should have done multifamily from the get go. And just as a as a buy and hold strategy, I was you know I, I, again nothing against flipping. I think everybody should flip uh, for cash flow because it's a fantastic way to make cash flow. But they should use that money to buy multifamily properties and build up their nest egg. And that's because what I experienced was I lost all these houses, but my my apartments did just fine. They were able to weather the contraction. And I got to tell you, there's another contraction coming coming MC. There's no question about it. I've interviewed right. billionaire on my show. I've interviewed other huge, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate that study macroeconomics, and they all say there's a contraction coming. And so, for those of you that are flipping, I will give you a word of caution. I wouldn't be flipping the big stuff right now because you have to have a, an exit strategy. You have to, you know, you have to have a second exit strategy just in case the place doesn't sell so that you know i wouldn't do short-term debt and i wouldn't do um i wouldn't do really high-end stuff because if you do and you get caught when the contraction hits if financing will dry up overnight and you won't be able to sell so you better be able to rent and if you've got you know one year debt on your property that could be a real problem too so i would just say you know if you're flipping go in with both eyes wide open right now and and have a second exit strategy ie renting or something like that just in case you get caught uh with when this contraction happens and you know it real estate goes in cycles i've been through three of them and they and it's gonna it's gonna happen it goes up it goes down that's just how it works and so you know know that you know i, I think we've we've been rising for a long time and like i said um People much smarter than me, uh, I, I interviewed a billionaire. It was my first interview on my podcast, and, and he, he talked about it. He says he doesn't think it's going to be bad as, as, as bad as 08, but in the next 24 months, there will be a pullback, and who knows how big it's going to be. But, you know, but again, the aha moment for me was, damn, I wish I'd have just been in multifamily because I would have survived it without getting the, the huge seminar that I got. And... um you know, and I can talk about other reasons why multifamily for for a buy and hold strategy. Again, just as we're talking buy and hold, why it's so much better. I mean, from a management standpoint, from a operational standpoint. I mean, I had 800 houses here, and uh, in the Gulf Coast of Florida, and literally, I had them two hours north and two hours south, and everywhere in between. And you talk about, you know, the the the, the hurdles of leasing, the hurdles of doing maintenance. You know, the all of these things that that logistically. I mean, I was able to pull it off because I'm great with systems, but. There's a much easier way. So if you're buying and holding, guys, don't do single family. Do multifamily. It's for a whole lot of reasons. I mean, if you've got a single family house and it's and it's vacant, it's a hundred. You're a hundred percent vacant. If right. you've got a duplex and one side's empty, then you know you may be able to survive with one or two units empty. If you've got a plex or if you've got you know more than that. So. You know, it's just it's it's and it's much easier to maintain. It's easier to keep an eye on. It's easier to manage. Um, so, you know, for a whole lot of reasons, I, I'm a big proponent for multifamily. And by the way, um, I, I want to mention this. Uh, I have a book that I wrote. Uh, it's called uh, Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. It's all about multifamily real estate investing. It's 200 pages. I will give it to your listeners for free. Okay, and it's not an okay. upsell, uh, not an upsell or anything like that. It's just it's just me adding value. So if they want it, if you guys are listening, you can text four one four one one, and just put in the name the word Rod. Just text Rod R O D to four one four one one, and I'll put you on the list for the book. It's in editing right now. I finished it, but it's got to be cleaned up. So 30 to 60 days tops, and I'll get it to you. Uh, and it's real good. I mean, it's it's no fluff. It is it is all about soup to nuts, how to buy multifamily from finding an area to talking to brokers, to talking to sellers, to the financing, to the managing, to the taking it out, taking it down, the whole the whole thing, soup to nuts. So it's a lot of value. Perfect. Well, have, thank, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Can you speak about a little bit about setting up a real estate buying machine? Because you've obviously bought a lot of sure. properties. What uh, system and strategies have you used to set up this machine? Sure, sure. Well, you know, there's so many more systems now than there were when I when I first started. I mean, I was using Lotus One, Two, Three, and that really that really dates me. That's it. for those of you that are young. That's that's like the old version of Excel, just a different different uh, different uh, manufacturer. But anyway, 
No, I, I mean, there's so many great CRM systems now. I We use simple CRM uh, for our broker communications. To, uh, you know, when you're buying multifamily, you have to develop relationships with brokers and you have to stay in front of them so they send you deals. So we use it for them. We use it for our sellers, for our mailers. Um, you know, um, if you if you want to have scale, even in a flipping business, you know you you have got to set up systems. You've got to ha- you know have a, have some sort of a database management system where you're tracking who you're communicating with and and tracking your deals. And so you know if you're not using a CRM, you know there's so many good ones out there. I mean we from I have another. Uh, big business that I own, a uh, litigation support company with 50 employees, and we use Salesforce. But, you know, that's $3,500 a month. You don't need to do that. You can, like, simple CRM, I think, is free, the initial version, or there's other ones that I know are free or very inexpensive. So you use a CRM, and any business, any business out there is nothing but people and systems. So, guys, if you're flipping houses, systemize everything you do. Develop checklists to make sure you never miss anything. You know, um, flow out, flow out a deal from from how you find the deal to how you close it to how you get your investment money to how you fix it up to how you sell it. Every piece of that, that's systems. That's systemizing. Systemize your your um, you know how when you go in a house and you're looking at what it needs to 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 fix it up. Literally have a checklist that you go through so you never miss anything and and that you know it's it's checklists it's 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 tracking it's you know making sure you you don't miss any deadlines it's um you know checklists for closing you know the the things you have to put together to close that's how you systemize and that's how i was able to buy you know 1300 houses here in florida one at a time i didn't buy multiples at a time i bought one at a time from different sellers and and fixed them up and rented them out and i did that with a very small team and it was all systems it's all checklisted it's all you know so Sometimes, guys, you have to work on your business, not just in it. Okay, so that's the really again on, and not in, and and that means you have to look, step outside of the box that you're in, and look at it and how you how how do you make the box better? How do you make it more efficient? What can you leverage to someone else? What can you what can you assign to someone else to do? Who can you bring in? Does it make sense to get a virtual assistant on Fiverr and and have them do a piece of what you do? You know, help you with your mailers or whatever, whatever you can leverage. You know, look at the value of your time and how much you're doing in your business and, it, you know, and, and, and work to outsource as much as you can uh, and, and, and uh, make it whatever, whatever you're doing as efficient as possible. Right. And the big, the big lesson, too, is writing everything down, making a list of a checklist and for someone to easily duplicate what you're doing so you can eventually unplug yourself from the system and manage it from another level. No, that's exactly right, and that's why that's why when you work on the business, you are basically putting a procedures manual together, even if it's just for you, so that at some point you can pass it off and give hand it to somebody. And say this is how you do it, and there's a great book on the topic. It's a classic uh, uh, by a guy named Michael Gerber called E Myth E M Y T H. That's a and, great book. Yeah, for systemizing, and that's what it's about. So hopefully that had that helped. Now, Rod, every investor and entrepreneur faces challenges and adversity and, as you call them, sem- seminars, learn, learn right. a lot of lessons. Um, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned and how did you bounce back from these lessons? Well, uh, you know, I've I've had lots of businesses. I've I just I was doing my memoirs, and I realized I've had eighteen businesses. But my biggest lessons are around real estate, and you know, of course, the big one was two thousand eight. I had I had eight hundred houses and net worth of fifty million dollars, and that just imploded. So, you know, uh, that seminar taught me the big aha. There was taught me the difference between multifamily and single family as it relates to buying and holding and building cash flow for life. And, you know, if if that's what you, if anybody listening is looking for recurring cash flow for life, please consider multifamily real estate. You know, that's all I talk about on my podcast, Lifetime Cash Flow Podcast. And and it's 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 about buying, managing, fixing and finding multifamily real estate. And so, you know, that that was my takeaway. And, you know, it was painful because I did, you know, my God, I've owned 2,000 houses. I mean, I was, I had some credibility as it relates to single family houses, but it was all a mistake. And I, in the buy and hold, well, I'm, let me back up. I'm not going to say it's a mistake because I'm sure there are listeners that have houses and they're doing just fine with them. I'm just, 
what I guess what I'm saying is I if if I had done multifamily, I'd be on the back of my yacht right now instead of <laughs> I'd be having this podcast from my yacht. But right. you know, it, it's it's all good and 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 I'm not down on single family. I'm just saying from a from a from a cash flow standpoint, it's a much safer way to go than single family. You know, to 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 weather contractions. That's all, and 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 it, it is different in different parts of the country. I will, I have to say that because I was in Florida, taxes and insurance here are very high. If I'd had the houses in Denver, I may have survived, but uh, but I'd sold all those to buy down down here. So you know, those of you in in very st- stable markets, you'd probably be okay with single family, but you do so much exponentially better with multifamily. That's that's all I can say about that. So you know, but that's that was my biggest lesson. What advice would you give to some of the listeners out there that's listening to the multifamily side of things? How do they get started in that? What what advice I would give uh, anybody can thinking about this business is and, and and I take I take six to eight calls a week from people. I get free thirty minute phone calls. Um, they can sign up for them on lifetimecashflowpodcast dot com. And I don't sell anything. It's just to help and add value. But every single one of those people, I tell them the same thing. Find the information and learn the information via a course, via books, via podcasts, but study this, okay? It's not, you know, don't dabble. Study it. That's number one. I, I tell them there's two tracks. One is you study. You book learn, okay? Be it a course, be it be it uh, uh, books, whatever. Study it, okay? That's number one. Number two, get out there and kick the tires start looking at deals start developing relationships with brokers you know in your backyard don't even if your backyard's very expensive look at deals anyway develop relationships with brokers learn how to talk to them have them send you deals evaluate them go look at them start building an intuition about multifamily real estate i just recently interviewed grant cardone he's a superstar in the sales arena he he does sales training and he has 4,000 units, I believe. He has his own jet. I mean, he's got more money than you can imagine. But he studied real estate for five years before he bought his first property. That's the reason I bring him up. So start that process, guys. Start looking at deals. Start looking at multifamily because what will happen is you'll start developing an intuition for what's a good deal. Um, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a great book called Blink about how how it, you know people can make a decision on something from their intuition. I mean, I can tell you that before long with me buying houses, I could literally walk in and within a minute, maybe a minute and a half, I'd know if a house was a deal or not. And and that I developed that intuition. And the same you can do the same thing with multifamily. So do those two things. One, learn the business, podcasts, books, courses. Two, go out and look at deals. Don't do one or the other. If you do one or the other, you won't make it. You've got to do both. You've got to learn the nuances and you've got to go out there and look at deals. Now, Rod, one habit that I've observed from wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new subjects and learning new skills. What are you currently studying and what skill sets are you currently learning? Well, I will tell you digital. I, 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 uh, di- uh, digital marketing and, uh, and incorporating technology into my business is, is the one thing that I'm really lacking and that I need to study. And so, you know, that's, that's really where my focus is. And, you know, that learning, learning how to digitally market, how to have more of an online presence. I just hired a videographer. I'm going to start doing a lot of YouTube videos that I'll put on there for free about success, about real estate, about building a real estate business. And, and, uh, you know, I put together a, a video studio. And so I'm, I'm, I'm slowly, I'm a kind of a dinosaur. I don't, I, I have a Twitter, although, you know, people help me with it. I have, uh, you know, a Facebook page, but it's pretty much just a photo gallery for my family and I. I need to maximize that. So I'm studying. I'm studying digital marketing, and I'm studying utilizing technology in my in my businesses to to you know to be more efficient, to systemize better. So those those are the you know those are the skill sets that I need the most help with. I mean, you know, talking about psychology, talking about real estate, I can do that in my sleep. But but digital, <laughs> anything digital, I need help. Now, a core message in my show is to leave our families and communities and the world a better place than we found it by passing down a mindset, values, and principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations and we're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? Um, we've talked about all of them, and I will recap them. One of them, of course, is seek fulfillment, not just achievement 
okay? Help, give back. Anything that doesn't contribute in, contribute in this universe gets eliminated. So we, we were, as human creatures, have a basic need to contribute beyond ourselves. So make sure you do that. Number two, learn. It's a constant learning process. When I owned 800 houses, my son, who was like 11 or 12 at the time, would come in and say, why are you buying these real estate books and going to these real estate courses? You could teach this stuff. And I told him, because I'm always learning. There's always something new to learn. So keep learning. And number three, just do it. Like Nike says, just do it. Everybody I interview that's gotten into multifamily real estate, I ask them what their one regret was. And almost to a one, it's always the same answer. I should have started sooner. Are there any other books that you would recommend to my audience? Oh, let's see. Uh, I love The Slight Edge. I don't know who the author is, but I've given away hundreds of copies of that book. It's fantastic. It's an easy read. Um, Gary Keller's book, I'm about to interview him on the show. We're just scheduling that now. He wrote uh, That One Thing, or I, I, I may have that title wrong, but it's something yeah, One Thing. Yeah, The One Thing. It's a great the book. The One Thing. Yeah, yeah The One Thing. Anything by Tony Robbins is fantastic. Um, anything by Kiyosaki, of course, is fantastic. Well, how can my yeah. audience learn more about you and your company, your podcast, and keep informed yeah. of all the projects that you're involved with? On iTunes, it's Lifetime Cash Flow Podcast. Uh, we have uh, uh, exponentially grown. I've had fantastic interviews on there. And like I said, I do the, the, the small clips on the psychology that I, I, I really feel like add a lot of value. Um, so Lifetime Cash Flow Podcast. My, my website is lifetimecashflowpodcast.com. I actually have a uh, a report that I just put together, the 29 biggest mistakes um, apartment buyers make when they buy an apartment. And they could go to Lifetime Cashflow Academy and get a free copy of that. Uh, it's uh, lifetimecashflowacademy.com. Um, and it's and it's not fluff. It's really good. Uh, it's 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 not one of these fluffy little report things. This is I spent a lot of time on this. So you know it's it's the mistakes. You don't want to make mistakes. You want to learn from other people's mistakes so you don't make them. Believe me, I've made every single one of them. So you know don't don't do it the way I did. I'm a kind of fire ready aim sort of guy. You need to you need to in this business you need to aim a, a couple of times so that you fire accurately. But uh, yeah. So and then if if uh, you know, uh, every dime for my foundation goes to food or things for the kids. If if they have any interest in looking at that, it's tinyhandsfoundation.org. My last little thing to tell you, the people listening, is get out there and do it, guys. You know, don't just listen to the podcast. Learn it. Build the confidence so that you can influence people and be congruent when you're talking to them and go do it. Rod, it's been a pleasure. I've had a blast. Thank you so Likewise. much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your knowledge and providing so much value to my listeners. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me and my guest, Rod Cleef. Remember to grab your free audiobook download from Audible. You can download any book for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can grab your free trial and audiobook download at cashflowninja.com forward slash free book download. Please support our show by shopping on Amazon through our homepage at cashflowninja.com forward slash Amazon. And remember to sign up for our community and mailing list by texting the word Cashflow Ninja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. As always, guys, if there's any way that I can provide more value to you and serve you better, please go to our contact page and send me an email through our web service or reach out to me at info at cashflowninja.com. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cashflow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.